So it's worth asking, what is a dog whistle? In real life, it's a whistle that you blow that nobody else looking at you will hear except for the intended target, usually a dog. So when listening to their little discussion, you probably didn't hear any Holocaust denial among all of their... jokes. Welcome back, my legion. And you're probably wondering why I decided to start the video off in this particular area. Because last time, I did show a little bit of this part of the video already. But well, the primary reason why is because I wanted to talk a little bit more about what authoritarians do to control you. And this seems like the perfect spot to do so, as I respond in part two of this video. Authoritarians know that their ideas are bad. This man is an authoritarian. The reason why he's trying to silence other people is for the same reason that people like Mao, Pol Pot, Joseph Stalin, Benito Mussolini, Adolf Hitler, any communist dictator, the reason why they do it is because they know that if debated in the public square, their ideas would always lose. The right has gotten very, very, very good at fighting back with logic, facts, and evidence. So because of this, they need a way to make us be quiet. The problem is, this man is a YouTuber. That means he's aware that the internet, the information superhighway in the wild west of the world is now in existence so trying to make someone be quiet via telling them they no longer have a platform is much much harder than it used to be although it is starting to go back in the other direction so what's the best way of forcing someone you don't like to shut up simple you see shame is something they oftentimes use but in order to shame somebody, they had to be saying something shameful. Obviously, denying the Holocaust could be considered shameful, but very few people actually do that. But when you call something a dog whistle, this gives you the opportunity to turn it around. His attempt is to call anything he doesn't like a dog whistle for one particular reason. Because if he can say, well, it's coded language, you're not supposed to know that this person is denying the Holocaust. Only certain people are supposed to know. It may come off more objective. It may come off as, oh, even if there's no evidence or anything to back up what this person is saying, this person is denying the Holocaust. I'm just not supposed to do, I'm just not supposed to know. I, the lay person, am not supposed to know what the coded language is. It's a sneaky technique, but as we all know, coded language by itself isn't bad. First off, the OK symbol is just that. And it, sometimes it can be used as a three-point shot. But the term OK actually comes from Old Kinderhook, an organization with Benjamin Franklin in its ranks. It was, and there's plenty of other coded language that isn't bad. Not only that, but when you call something a coded piece of language, like a dog whistle, you have to be able to prove it. It's a lazy attempt at subverting somebody's narrative. It's no different than poisoning the well, making a straw man. You've all heard this the same thing. It's the same thing as taking what someone has said and then filling in your own meaning and then attacking that. We've all seen it before. The only difference is now the person is saying, well, if you don't hear any Holocaust denial, it's because you're just not smart enough. They did a good job of hiding it. It's coded language. There's nothing coded about it at all. So it's worth asking, what is a dog whistle? In real life, it's a whistle that you blow that nobody else looking at you will hear except for the intended target, usually a dog. So when listening to their little discussion, you probably didn't hear any Holocaust denial among all of their jokes. But Holocaust deniers did, and that's a dog whistle. There are literally so many dog whistles that people have made hours of content exposing and explaining them. I've even done a few of them in the first few minutes of this video just to show how easily they fly under the radar. That is an interesting little frame you decided to quickly show on the screen and quickly take away before anybody could see what it was. More than likely, I'm guessing that you would have one or two people pause it as quickly as they can and move on to the rest of the video and not really investigate what exactly that is that you've shown. Well, I'll explain it right now. So this was actually a hoax by 4chan. The idea was that many left-wing SJW organizations and people are so sensitive that they will look desperately for anything to find 
that could be considered offensive to someone somewhere by some weird arbitrary mean. So they decided to take the most banal symbol of all time, the OK symbol, which also can mean a three-point shot in basketball, and try to make up some story that it was a white supremist symbol. The idea was similar to when Mark Dice decided to edit certain parts of Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal. It was all done for a laugh, and it was also to troll people. The idea was to show that these people are so desperate for any kind of attention, and anything that they can claim is supposedly a symbol of white supremacy, that they will take something as innocuous and banal as the OK symbol and turn it into a symbol of white supremacy. The simple fact of the matter is that the right likes to troll the left to show how ridiculous they can be. Mark Dice is an expert at this. Last week when Alexandria Crazy Eyes Cortez released her New Green Deal, some of the proposals were so insane that many thought that they had to be a joke, but the part about stopping cows from farting and giving money to those who were unwilling to work were actually in the plan. So I decided to create some satirical screenshots, adding that we would all get a free massage chair, that the farmers needed an adequate supply of Brondo, cause it's got what plants crave, and that we would have to make our coffee from recycled urine. When I first posted them online, I said, spread it around guys, let's see if AOC will fact check this, adding the hashtag Green New Deal with a winking emoji. But certainly she wouldn't be so foolish to fact check what should be an obvious joke, right? Oh wait, what's this? She literally quote tweeted someone who posted the screenshots adding, when your Green New Deal legislation is so strong that the GOP has to resort to circulating false versions. <laughs> it's not a fake version, it's called satire, which according to the dictionary, which you've obviously never cracked open, says is the use of irony, sarcasm, and ridicule in exposing, denouncing, or deriding someone. In this one, all I did is take the actual text from her website, offering people great jobs, vacations, free food, and literally free money for those who are unwilling to work, and I just added that we'd all get a free massage chair. Including having that in the background. That, that food! So, what is that dog whistle in the background that he makes so much of a case about? Pepe the Frog. No, I'm not even kidding. For those who don't know, Pepe the Frog was a cartoon frog created by cartoonist Matt Fury. The whole point behind using Pepe in the meme form is because he looks like a very sad frog. And so oftentimes people would make fun of left-wing people by saying something along the lines of, when liberals get caught lying and then post a picture of Pepe crying. And of course, this was a good way of making fun of the left. And as we know, the far left really doesn't know how to take a joke. And that's all the more power for trolls. So they decided to keep using it, as you do. And sooner or later, they just kept using all different versions of Pepe. Some made by Matt Fury, some completely original versions. They even had a Hitler version at one point. Why? Because 16-year-old kids love to make fun of those who are easily offended by everything and love to offend people. That's the whole point. It's to make people feel offended. It was a form of dark humor. And as the article I'm showing you right now claims... Believe it or not, dark humor is a sign of higher intelligence. There's plenty of evidence to support this as well. You've likely seen a lot of these if you've spent any amount of time on the internet. Ever seen these seemingly unimportant numbers in someone's username? Like me, you probably thought that was just their birthday or something. Or having these two letters at the end of your Twitter handle. It's just an abbreviation for YouTube, I swear. Take a look at that disclaimer. Disclaimer, dog whistles are, by design, easily confused with normal everyday things. They may have actually been born in December 1990, or just be a YouTuber. Don't always assume they are a neo-Nazi. Wow, you kept it up there for all of two seconds? Tops? <laughs> you know, I get why you did that. We both know why you did this. It's pretty obvious, okay? But next time, if you want to hide little technicalities that you hope people don't see, do a better job.
How about these triple parentheses? What does that mean? Jews. But saying Jews is a little too on the nose, so instead they say international banking or the media or the globalists are gonna overthrow everything. I will be doing a video on what globalism is and isn't at a later time, but it is a very real thing and watch out for my video about that. But in the meantime, it's very, very interesting that you call something like Zionism in a later clip something that isn't real and it's just all a made-up little story. Want to see what I'm talking about, guys? Here we go. Globalists, Zionist, cultural Marxists, all of these are just code words to talk about Jewish people without actually saying it. Is this idiot really going to claim that Zionism isn't real? Wow, this this is the video that just keeps on giving, I swear to God, folks. And then there's this guy who says that Hitler didn't actually hate individual Jews, he just hated international Jewry. Now, a lot of mere mortals with a pleb tier understanding of the world say like, oh, Hitler hated Jews. Uh, no, he actually didn't. Hitler's battle was against international Jewry, international finance. This reframing of Hitler's reasoning for the Holocaust isn't unique to open white supremacists, but it isn't always so out in the open as Did Hitler do anything wrong? No! It's usually a little more subtle and nuanced. Hitler was obsessed with order and cleanliness. Hmm. He was a very orderly person. He was very sensitive to disgust. That's what it looks mm. like. And if you're disgusted by something, then you want to eradicate it. Increase the levels of hygiene in the factories to get rid of the rats and the mice, to plant flowers out front, you know, to make everything look neat and orderly. And the insecticide they used was Zyklon. A slightly different formulation was the gas that was used in the concentration camps. And mm. so Hitler went from cleaning up the rats and the mice in the factories and the insects, and then he went into the mental hospitals and started cleaning up in there. And then, mm. like, it just went mm. broader and broader, again, sort of one step at a time. That's right, because the Golden One and Jordan B. Peterson are exactly the same. I mean, it's an obvious fact. How could you not believe this? There is no difference. These people are essentially Siamese twins. I obviously want my disciples to listen to me as well. It's just that I try to be intellectually honest, and I don't think Jordan Peterson is this when he talks about two things. Collectivism and the Jewish question, or as he calls it, the so-called Jewish question. Oops. That's Jordan Peterson, a well-spoken clinical psychology professor who's gained a lot of popularity recently for defending free speech against feminism. But as people started to listen to what he had to say, they started to realize that he has a lot of unorthodox views on Hitler. In that previous clip, he posthumously diagnoses Hitler with cleaner type OCD and suggests that the Holocaust was just an escalation of that pathology. And the use of the insecticide Zyklon B on people was just a natural extension of using them on pests. According to this narrative, he didn't hate the Jews, he just wanted to clean up things that disgusted him. The fact that he's a real clinical psychologist with a PhD lends a dangerous legitimacy to that idea. Exterminating the physically and mentally disabled didn't come out of a desire to clean up. These people were often described as drags on the economy and society and were known as life unworthy of life or useless eaters. Remember that the time leading up to World War II was the Great Depression, so food and money were rather scarce. Eliminating these useless eaters, as well as the Jews and everyone else, increased rations for the rest of the German people which kept morale high during the war. The only people who ate better than the Germans were Americans. Saying that Hitler's motivation for the Holocaust was anything other than racial hatred distances us from the possibility that we too are capable of such evil. Once again, you're lying through your teeth. Everybody who saw that podcast knows damn well that what Jordan Peterson was trying to do was explain the mentality and thought process of Adolf Hitler. He was trying to explain how normal and unimportant Adolf Hitler found the deaths and murders he committed against Jews, vagabonds, and gypsies was to him. That was the whole point of what he was saying on that podcast. He wasn't justifying it, he was explaining the twisted mind of Adolf Hitler. This is something that you can see plenty of psychologists doing in shows like Mindhunter, where it's exactly about that exact concept. Understanding the very, very casual nature behind somebody mass murdering people. And this is something that psychologists do on a regular basis. It's not something that is abnormal. It's not something that is considered a unique version of the way someone could look at the Holocaust. It's understanding the mentality of a monster. And it is more than normal. 
A number of famous psychological studies in the 60s and 70s showed us that almost anyone is capable of horrific acts if they can justify their actions. I mean, who's going to take the responsibility if anything happens to that gentleman? I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. All right, next one, slow. And that's exactly what Dr. Peterson was doing on the H3 podcast. Good to see that our old friend knowing here was unwilling to acknowledge that. That doesn't sit well with most people, so they dismiss the Nazis by saying that Hitler was just crazy. Let no man call us crazy. They called Hitler crazy, but Hitler wasn't crazy. He was stupid. It's generally accepted among historians that Hitler was a rather poor military commander. Citation, citation, needed. citation needed. Citation fucking needed. It is time for me to say goodbye to my legion and everybody else watching. Thank you very much for watching today. If you would like to join my legion, hit that subscribe button below and I'll see you next time. My name is Arcean and I am the Angel of Objectivism, signing off.